This is the Sono Scion, and it might be the best car that never happened. The brief was straightforward, a simple, affordable electric city car covered in solar panels and designed with car sharing schemes firmly in mind. The Sono looked to be the perfect car to bring cheap, solar-powered transport to the masses. But sadly, due to a lack of investment, it never saw the light of day. But fear not, my sun-seeking utilitarian types, for I have found something even cheaper, even simpler, and just as solar-powered. This is the Squad Solar, and it is, quite simply, the world's cheapest solar-powered electric car. It is also, by design, impossible to crash. And I do appreciate that it looks more like a posh golf buggy than anything else. That is basically what it is. But it also happens to be, in my opinion, the future of urban transport. Let me show you what I mean. This is the Squad Solar, this is Breda, and this is the Fully Charged Show. We know you love the Fully Charged Show, so why not come along to our global live shows in 2023 and 2024? Our next shows in the UK, specifically Farnborough and Harrogate. So get your tickets before they sell out. Welcome then to the Squad Solar, the world's smallest, cheapest, solar-powered electric car. Isn't it cute? What have we got? Well, it's Dutch. It's a micro car. It's an L6 category micro car. That's the slightly lower speed category. There will be a faster L7 version. There'll even be an L7 version with rear seats. But for the time being, we've just got this one. Production scheduled to begin in 2024. First, they're gonna start delivering in the Netherlands and then other parts of Europe. And then it's going to the US. That's right, America. Are you watching? This is a small car that is actually coming to you. And what's the brief? Well, like all micro cars, it sort of wants to give you the best bits of a motorcycle and the best bits of the car, namely small, agile, easy to park, cheap to run, but at the same time, safety, weatherproof, heating, you know, a few creature comforts. What about this particular micro car? There are a lot of them at this point. What makes this one worth your attention? Well, if the Carver is the most fun, if the Microlino is the most stylish, if the City Transformer is the most unusual, I think this might be the most practical, the most spacious micro car. I think this might be the micro car that is most like a car. Let me show you what I mean. I think the first thing that jumps out to me about the exterior design of the Squad Solar is it's not all that narrow. We've driven so many micro cars like the Carver and the City Transformer where making it as skinny as possible has been very central to the design brief to help you squeeze through gaps in traffic. And the Squad Solar is still comfortably a quarter of the footprint of the average modern car, but they've not gone to great lengths to make it as narrow as possible. Instead, they've gone, look, give you a little bit of extra width, bit of extra stability on the road, more room for your solar panel, more room inside for your knees and elbows and your passenger. And these guys have been working closely with ride sharing companies here in the Netherlands who work with a fleet of bureaus, which are these little micro cars that have been knocking about here for a long, long time. Legally, you can drive one of those at 16 here in the Netherlands. And what that ride sharing company have informed Squad of is that 16 year olds do have a tendency to uh, drive them quite exuberantly and put them on their roofs. So a little bit of extra width, a little bit of extra stability, not a bad thing when you're gonna be renting these out to 16 year olds. Next thing you notice, look at all this glass. The visibility is going to be spectacular out of this vehicle. There's barely any body at all. We've got a cheerful little face down here, proper headlights, wing mirrors, lovely metallic paint, really, really eye-catching design. Now, let's talk about a couple of safety features that you probably wouldn't notice if I didn't point them out to you. Number one, have a look at this aluminium exoskeleton. This is the frame holding the car together. And I love the way it's been exposed like this. It's, it's really the first thing that's going to hit if you crash the car in any direction. Great way of protecting all the glass and the solar. Big fan of that. This has crash safety far beyond what is required for an L6 micro car. It's got full crash structures, front and rear as well. They've really gone above and beyond with the safety. On another note, this is something I really, really like. This is such a simple, clever idea. Can you see the way the tires, both front and rear, stick out just a tiny bit further than the nose and the rear bumper? That is by design. That means 
that when you're driving nose first into a parking space, you don't even need to look. You just drive until you crash into the curb, wheel bounce off the curb, you're in. Here we go, approach the space. Turning circle, still a bit prototypey, it will get tighter. In we go, in we go, and oh, there we go. That must be the curb. I'll just reverse, tidy it up a little bit. Back into drive, forward we go, and oh, yeah, that's it. I'm in. My mum's been employing this parking of style for uh, years now. Around the side, not much to report other than a big old door. Basically, the entire side of the vehicle is the door. They've really emphasised maximum ease of access with this vehicle. They want you to be able to get in and out of it really, really easily, which is not the case with quite a few micro cars. And then up here, this is where the party happens. Big, old solar panel. They've managed to get a lot of real estate up here, considering the size of the car. It's almost the entire footprint of the vehicle. And you can get up to 20 kilometres of range in one day from that big solar panel. That's a number they pulled from the Netherlands. They didn't go to the equator. They've gotten more than 30 kilometres of range in one day in parts of Spain. But here in the Netherlands, where it's a bit cloudy, a bit like England, 20 km a day. The average microcar, by the way, drives about 12 kilometres a day. So you could comfortably be doing the vast majority, if not all, of your daily driving in the squad solar without ever having to plug in. And this is quite interesting. Back there, we've got 167 litres of boot space. That's a big old boot for a microcar. That goes up to 263 litres if you flatten the passenger seat, by the way. But actually, uh, no, no boot lid, no, no, no rear hatch. They've done some, uh, some testing on this. The Citroen Ami is a key rival of this. That doesn't have a tailgate either. Tailgate's very expensive to design and manufacture. And what they've learned from asking customers who've pre-ordered is that most people are okay just opening the passenger door, chucking their bits on the seat or folding the seat flat down and going into the boot that way. It saves money and it's part of the way that they've achieved the impressively low price point of this vehicle, which we'll get to in a moment. Down here, this is where the party happens. Rear wheel drive, this vehicle, we've got two little two kilowatt motors powering each rear wheel. And then back here, just under this lid, I'm not allowed to show you this, but there are removable, swappable battery packs. 1.6 kilowatt hour batteries. The Squad Solar can take up to four of them at any one time. They're kind of just like a briefcase that you pull out, slot a new one back in. They're not especially fast charging. You either charge via the solar panels or via domestic plug socket. But the beautiful thing is they're swappable and you can have lots of them. So you're not that worried about charging times. Ideally, when your battery runs out, you've got another fresh one ready to slot in there. Before we get into any kind of critiquing of this vehicle, I just want to be very clear on the fact that this is a prototype. I say that a lot on the channel, we're very lucky. People are very kind and they let us drive stuff early, ahead of time, before it's finished. But this is really not finished quite yet. They're basically going to throw the entire suspension out and start again. It's nowhere near complete and there is a lot of room for improvement in the department of NVH. That's an industry term, it means noise, vibration, harshness. There's quite a lot of those at the moment. It's not finished yet, so we're not going to judge. Oh, we're not going to judge. Now, let me just very quickly do my obligatory piece that I do every time I drive a micro car to talk about how right it feels driving one of these through a city centre. It's wonderful. Chris, one of the founders, had this lovely expression just a moment ago. And he said, when you drive the Squad Solo, you feel so much more at harmony with the urban environment. He's absolutely right. This just feels so much more appropriate on these narrow city streets. All of a sudden, the road feels wider. There's ample room for cyclists to zoom past me if they so wish. It doesn't feel ridiculous or dangerous that I'm sharing a road with cyclists in the first place. I mean, take this, look at this road that I'm on now. How Dutch is this? This is a cycle lane that cars are allowed on also but it's all about the cyclist first and foremost. And that big electric Ford Transit van coming the other way looks absurdly huge and ungainly going down this little road. Me, I've got room to zigzag if I'm so inclined. So we're not gonna talk about handling, we're not gonna talk about suspension and ride comfort. Those things are not finished yet, but we can talk about the astonishing visibility. My goodness, I feel like I'm outside driving this thing. So much glass such great visibility in every direction. Frankly, you hardly even need the mirrors. You just turn your head and 
And there you go. It, 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 it's the same level of visibility you get on a bicycle. Would you like to know the efficiency of this vehicle? <laughs> just the 12, just the 12 miles to the kilowatt hour as of the most recent tests that they've done. That makes it substantially more efficient than the light year zero that these chaps previously worked on. And that is, of course, in no small part because this vehicle is light, 350 kilos. It's worth remembering, and this was something that the light year guys were at pains to explain to me back when we drove that. When it comes to solar powered vehicles, efficiency is very, very important. On a good day in the Netherlands, you might pull one kilowatt hours worth of energy from the sun. One kilowatt hour in my Polestar is two and a half miles. But in this, well, in this, it's about 12 miles. And that's what an efficient vehicle does. It makes more use of the relatively small amount of power that you're drawing from the big solar panel. And another thing they've done to keep this vehicle relatively efficient is not go crazy with speed. What I have here is an L6 category vehicle. That's the slower category of micro car, top speed 45 kilometers per hour. But when they upgrade this to an L7, they're not gonna go to the full 90 kilometers per hour, which is the legal top speed for L7s. They're gonna keep it to about 75 because they reckon that's enough. They don't want you to go faster than that because when you double your speed, you quadruple air assistance, meaning efficiency goes in the toilet. And what's more, it just makes everything a bit more dangerous. And this is a very safety-minded micro car. Don't you just love removable doors? Why don't all vehicles have removable doors? What I really like about the way that Squad have gone about developing this vehicle is a lot of it has just been through offering stuff on the website to pre-orders and seeing if people take it or not. So for example, originally they weren't sure if they were going to do doors. And then on their website, they offered with doors, with half doors, which are kind of just like two bars or no doors at all. Everyone specs doors. So now it has doors but they are an optional extra and you can remove them on sunny days. Oh yes. And have a look at this interior. This is about as simple as simple gets, but done really, really nicely. Inside here, astonishingly low dashboard, lots and lots of space for storage. We've got the big boot behind me. This seat lowers down, you drop your shopping in the bag. And again, it's all a bit prototypey. Things aren't quite finished. So for example, in the future, this will fold all the way flat. And then when I pull this lever, this, will fold all the way flat and then there'll be a nice storage tray here and that's how you get into your boot and you get it into full cargo mode. This is all a work in progress. A couple of other things that are set to change off the back of learnings from this prototype. The dash is gonna get a little bit higher because they're gonna put uh, air conditioning in. The wing mirrors are gonna get a little bit higher so that they are easy to see out of. You know, this is the process of trial and error. As far as other features to talk about in here, well, there's not a huge amount and that's sort of the point. We've got heating, you need that to defog your windscreen. Air conditioning is going to be an optional extra as well. We've got a couple of cup holders. We've got a nice phone holder here. There will be a USB-C port to charge your phone. No speaker, you don't need that. That's excessive. That makes things expensive. Bring your Bluetooth speaker, pop it in the cup holder if you want music. And plus, you're only going to be driving it about 10 minutes. That's sort of what it's designed for. In front of me, really simple digital display. It shows me my speed. It shows me my range. It shows me how much energy I'm pulling from my solar panels at any given time. Easy to forget. Easy to forget as I sit here talking nonsense into the camera that this big panel above me is charging the car right now, it's so rewarding to know that at every moment of every day, you are drawing free energy from the sun. Beautiful. And that's about it for the interior. Really, really impressively roomy considering the footprint of the vehicle. Again, there will be a slightly longer version of the L7 category, the faster one, with a little bench seat in the back. You could squeeze a couple of kids in. That's about it. Simple, isn't it? Can I tell you the price? I've been teasing you this whole video. Okay, here we go. As of right now, the starting price of the Squad Solar before tax will be 6,250 euro for a solar powered electric city car. There are options that you can add to the Porsche Taycan that cost more than this entire solar powered car. Six and a bit thousand euro, that is not bad at all. But of course, I think subscription services, car sharing schemes, that to me is where this car makes the absolute most sense. 
can you not just picture one of these sat on every street corner of every major European city? You unlock it with your phone, you jump in, you zoom to where you're trying to get to, and then you leave it there. You don't even have to worry about plugging it in. It's charging all the time. And because it's got those swappable batteries, people can just come around in electric vans and swap them out and put new ones in as and when necessary, just like they do with electric rental bikes and scooters. And Squad have had ride sharing firmly in mind throughout the development process of this vehicle. They already have one eye on building in software whereby you can unlock a Squad Solar with your phone so that you can access it through ride sharing apps. And the future that these guys envisage as far as ride sharing and Squad Solar is autonomous versions of these vehicles which will identify where high demand areas of the town are and drive themselves there waiting to be rented by you. Between the solar panels, the swappable batteries, the simplicity and roominess of this cabin, the practicality with all the storage, this just feels like natural progression for urban transportation. Renting one of these to get across town instead of owning a giant two and a half ton lump that sits outside of your house 95% of the time, doesn't that just make so much more sense? So, initial thoughts on the Squad Solar based on this very early drive of this very early prototype. Well, look, our love of micro cars here at Fully Charged Show is well documented and breaking news, fitting them with swappable batteries and solar panels just makes them way better. And I love the no frills design brief of this particular micro car. I love this idea of, look, we're not trying to make something fancy or fast. We're just trying to make the best way to get from A to B in a city with a mate and some bags. And I truly think that's what this is. It's insanely easy to get in and out of. The visibility is outrageously good. It's simple to drive. It's basically impossible to crash. I can just see these on every street corner of every major city in Europe tomorrow. And I think people will take to them so quickly because they don't look alien. They just look like little golf buggies. The more of these we have on the road, the less cars we have on the road, the better our roads get, not just for drivers, but for pedestrians, cyclists babies getting a bit soapboxy but you get the point these make cities better and that's why i want to see them everywhere so there we go squad solar wish them every luck and success please make sure to like and subscribe and if you have been thank you for watching <laughs>